Hello everyone, welcome to Smart Investing. I'm Albert and today this video is going to be about the banking services sector. Um, I can't remember what number video this is. I believe it's 56 or so. So anyways, uh, today is October 17th, 2022 and it is 1014 p.m. and we're doing again the banking services sector uh the related sector as well is also the banks and then the other sectors as well can be the consumer lending companies so if any of these companies come up uh just so you guys know it is a similar sector now before we begin uh these are not in a specific order. I'm just going over these five bank stocks just to see if they're a good company or not. So let's begin. I'm going to start off with the first company, MCBS, Metro City Bank Shares. Um, I like the name of it. Um, has like a nice ring to it. Um, I don't know. That's just me. Just really like the name, I guess. So... $22.18. Again, markets are closed. So uh, we're going to see if this company is good or not. So we have a volume of 32000 52 52-week high and low. Difference of about $10. It's pretty decent. Uh, but we're going to see if it's holding up. Market cap is at $564 million. Very, very small market cap. Earnings per share is at 2.7. Dividend is only a 60 cent uh, dividend. Dividend yield, I know people love dividend yields, but for this one, it's pretty low. Um, that's all I got for this stock, so it is what it is. Now, the PE ratio we have here is 8.17. Uh, forward PE, 8.15. It's about the same. So, we're going to keep moving on to the next. Now, moving on to the one-year chart. We have the one-year chart, obviously, in a downtrend. Uh, it's been hinting at the 200 levels, there, as you can see. But it actually breaks back down below it. Like, you see, this one is very, very extended. Uh, so it looks like a lot of people have been buying this stock as of late. That's a really, really big jump uh, for, you know, this past week, especially. It's a really big jump. Um, not by just looking at the dollar amount, just by looking at the chart. You have here this one big jump. Then from here to here, you know, you can see what I'm talking about so you have this one big jump and then it slowly creeps up but then it kind of curves it looks kind of flat so then it jumps up again right here so when you add this one and this one together it'll look something actually like this and then like that so have here also these big bars there uh that means there's a lot of volume within that time whether it's before the market or after the market that's a really big sign um i want to see if the volume goes up in the open for this week so again just randomly me catching this stock uh, looking for very, very active movement. Just happens to be very, very active for some reason. Um, I just don't know why. Uh, but other than that, we're looking at now the five year. Five years seems pretty flat. I'm not too crazy about it. But again, for this year, uh, it's on a downtrend. But for this past month, 
and actually within the past three months again, uh, it's been going above the 200 EMA, but it's been fighting to keep that up. Uh, if tomorrow becomes a down day, again, it would still have to hover around that level. And definitely above the 100. And then the 50 EMA is not too far behind. So we're only talking about mere cents. So because the 50 EMA is at $20.33, the 100 EMA is at $20.61. So we're only talking about 30 cent difference um, above that level for the 50. So again, apparently it looks like it's holding up. This might be a bear rally. You're going to have whipsaws like that. Um, it's normal uh, for the month of October. Uh, but going into November and December, those are typically in general uh, bullish months. So that's something that's not going to be out of the ordinary unless major, major news happens. So moving on to the analysis portion gonna look at the quant ratings uh rating that out of four out of five that's the trading central is giving it so we have momentum of 6.26 quality of 6.62 income of 6.4 i don't know why they give that rating for income so high um i disagree with that number quality um with that market cap, I disagree. And then also, the growth, I don't know. Momentum, I can agree with that number, 6.26. Uh, overall rating of four star out of five, I don't think so. I do not think so. Now, looking into a little bit more of the fundamentals real quick. We have uh, net margins, not seeing much. Annuals not giving me much. Debt to asset, so 90% debt, typical for a bank. Then we have net income. And again, these are 2021 results. Again, I don't have 2022, so I'm expecting downgrades. So when these results come, Definitely in a few more months, um, probably late in the later years, I'll go over it and then you will see probably 2024 <laughs> results by the time I redo this video again. And I won't do it in sets of five. I'll do them individually. I just want to see comparisons as to uh, all these stocks because you never know if they might get delisted or merged or whatever. So... Um, it's always good to see the past and learn from the past. So when you see and do stuff in the future, um, you already know, you know, the experiences that were there beforehand. So it's it's a better learning process when you actually do it yourself and, and see everything happening when you actually do it. So revenue, it's not showing me. Operating income, it's not showing me. That's okay. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, cash flow. We'll see that. So $65 million in operating. Negative 930. Negative. And then for financing, we're going to look at that. $1.16 billion. So they are cash flow positive. Um, when it comes to banks, it's, it's really a hit or miss. You're going to have some companies that are negative. You're going to have some companies that are positive. Uh, it just depends. So, for growth and momentum, that was the highest ratings. Uh, income, I disagree. I don't see that. We have here paying rising dividends from quarter to quarter, raising quarter to quarter. But each quarter, it's only like a penny. That's not that much. You can see in 2020, 
They did make four payments, but they made a cut in 2020, the second half of the year. So then in 2021, they made four payments as well, and they raised the dividend for 2021 for that year going into 2022. Uh, That's not much of a boost. It's just um, something just to hand out. You know, it's not a major boost at all. So with a penny raise, it's pretty much nothing. We have here Metro City Bank shares. Uh, We want to see if they are in other states. Are they a local bank or what? So this is there in Georgia region. The Metro right here. Sorry, I didn't mean to cross that out. I meant to uh, underline it. So it says they have branches in Alabama, Florida, Georgia. That's what I'm looking for. New Jersey, Texas, Virginia. So they do have uh, other locations in other states, which is good. Uh, That's always a good thing. So now we're going to decide if uh, this company is good or not. Uh, I think there are better companies out there. Uh, The only reason I would give it a look, and then as of right now, and maybe in the next few weeks or months, it's just because of the technical reasons. Um, I want to look for volume. And price change, see if anything's happening there. Um, I want to see if it can hold over the 200 EMA. Once that starts happening for at least uh, towards the end of this week, and then one more week also. So we're looking at a total of two weeks. If it can hold around that 200 EMA, uh, I'm not assuming, but... I would think um, it would start holding pretty good. And then it might go on an uptrend from there. Because if it's holding onto its momentum, um, it would just be a matter of time as to when banks start reporting and then we get all these positive news and blah, blah, blah. Like, oh yeah, you know, you're going to hear a lot of a lot of lip service, as I like to say. That, oh, you know, the consumer's strong and this and that. And um, to be honest, uh, the numbers don't really show for it, you know, because anybody can say anything. Yeah, everybody's doing good. But in all reality, uh, they might just be looking in major cities, not rural areas. So what I'm saying is uh, they're not taking everyone into effect. You know, just maybe a larger population than compared to uh, a bigger region in certain states than other regions and, you know, throughout the state. So probably they just take bigger populations and then leave out the smaller populations. So again, um, not everyone, to be honest, is on equal footing. That is like a given for sure. You're going to have uh, different income levels, obviously. Anywhere you go, um, that's always a given. And again, um, some people might struggle and some people are not. I just, that's just the way I see it. You know, it's not like you live in an area. Typically, you know, it's not like you're going to live in an area um, near millionaires. And we all know where millionaires and billionaires um, more or less live at in these big, big mansions. So, obviously, people like myself, and I'm sure any old regular Joe doesn't live in a mansion. So, moving on to the next stock. So, I said MCBS. I'd say no overall. Next one up, LSBK. Make sure. So, for this five-year chart, uh, first page, volume is really low. Uh, Market cap is awful. At 74 million, 52 week high and low, awful. Earnings per share, at least they're positive, but it's pretty low. Dividend is at 72 cents. Dividend yield is at 5.55. PE is at 12. 
um, volume, this is like one of the worst. This is like one of the worst stocks I've seen. Looking at these numbers, awful. Um, would I dare even look at the chart? Uh, it's not even holding up. It's going to new lows. Uh, <laughs> this is an automatic no. I don't even have to look at. I don't even want to look at the the financials. Um, just by this first page alone, um, there's a lot of negatives. Um, again, I'm gonna say no to the stock, and I'm just gonna move on to the next one. Uh, the fundamentals and technicals were awful. So, sorry, but the stock is too uh, it's too low in market cap. You know, people aren't buying into it. Um, it's just not a good stock. And I wouldn't say it's not a good company because, again, the numbers may say different. Again, I'm not saying it, but as of right now, it's not a good stock to invest in for a company. Um that's just my take on it. So we have the next stock, SRCE, first source. Volume is at 53. Uh, so close to 54,000. Market cap is at $1.26 billion cap. Stock is at $51.16. 52 week low and high. Difference of about 10 bucks. Not bad. PE ratio around 11. Uh, earnings are pretty strong. Dividend payment is at 1.28, better than most. Um, I would say I do like the numbers for this one. Um, it is holding up, actually. So it's holding up above, you can see, above the 200 within the five year. Uh, very volatile. It's been fighting ever since. Uh, you know, early April all the way down to uh, July, and then till till September. That's when it actually broke out, and now it's actually holding up. It's been holding up for the last three months. So this stock is doing okay. It's doing okay. Uh, I would say it needs more volume. Uh, but again, volume does not necessarily mean it will go up. Uh, it just depends on the overall trend. So, uh, for the most part, within the last three months, it's been on an uptrend. So, if the volume did pick up, uh, it makes it harder to short it because of that time frame that it had in the momentum beforehand. So it has some decent momentum. So if it were to continue the momentum, it'll be easy to uh, break new highs. Because you see double tops. It tried to break that and it failed. Now it's trying to attempt it a second time and break the the high in the last three months. So yeah, we have a double top for the year. I'm going to see what it can do for that. So moving on to the analysis for quants uh highest was quality uh we're gonna see why overall rating for the stock was a three out of a five so i would say i think the quality for this stock um has earnings i'm sure it has revenue and it's been beating its earnings i would i would assume so uh management when it comes to money or assets and equity. So it's positive. Return on equity has been growing. Earnings per share has been growing. Not giving me the net margins. That is um, it's on par. It's on par like other companies at 88%. Net income has gone up from 2020 to 2021. Total revenue is not showing me. It's not showing me any of that. So cash flow, we're going to see if it's positive. I would assume so. Uh, so net income's good. Earnings are getting beat. Cash flow positive. Uh, 
they're on par with their peers when it comes to their debt. So that's not a bad thing. And we're just going to look at the dividend. So they are paying rising dividends. Not as fast as a pace that I would like on, on my portfolio personally. But they are paying rising dividends. Again, it's not much, only a penny. So that just seems pretty consistent and stable. So that's obviously a good thing. Uh, and they have made their quarterly payments consistently paying within the same month and everything else. So we're going to look at the splits real quick. No splits, so that's good. And that's pretty much it for this stock. Moving on to the next one. So for that stock, SRCE, uh, I will say that it is a good stock. So, so far I got two no's and one yes. So Lending Tree, I think some people may have heard of this. Wow, that's a really big drop for the one year. We're going to look at the five year, another big drop. Um, that's hard to, to look at. Uh, to see that it hasn't uh, maintained its 2020 levels and gone below its 2020 levels. Honestly, I don't see a stock like that coming back because it's dropped so much. Um, right off the bat, right off the bat, um, I'm going to say no to this stock. Um, for this year and next year. I don't I just don't see it happening. That's a lot of movement for it to be dropping to head back up again. That's going to take a lot. So that is a nice uh, spread. But, uh, you know, that's a, you know, $140 difference. But it's to the downside. So you're already looking at a $140 loss if you invested at the top. So that's Awful to see. They're not paying a dividend. They shouldn't be. And um, just by looking at it, the fundamentals failed. And the technicals failed. So right away, sorry, Lending Tree, but I'm going to say no to that stock automatically. Last stock that I have is PRAA. $31.91. So it's headed into its 2020 uh, lows going into that. Volume is pretty high, actually. Uh, so they're not paying a uh, dividend. Uh, earnings are, you know, higher than their peers. 52-week high and low of 51, low of 31. Difference of $20. So that's pretty good. Uh, decent market cap. Uh, the other numbers look pretty good. Now we're going to see the five year. So again, it's going into its 2020 uh, period as to the same price. So that is not a good sign for the technical side. So for fundamentals, it looks good. For technicals, it looks bad. So for the tiebreaker, for the decision, we're going to look at what we have for the quant. We have momentum, 7.77. Uh, that is the highest rating that was given by Trading Central. So momentum, uh, again, the volume is at 196. I, would, I mean, I, I would have to look at the stock in the next few days to see if that volume does keep up or if it gets higher. Uh, then also I will have to start looking at technicals a little bit more. See how it does on a week to week and day to day basis. Cause from the five year, it looks awful for the one year and the long term, it looks awful. Three months looks awful. And again, I don't see it recovering. Again, but I could be wrong. So we have here the. Thank you, thank you. I'm almost done, okay? I got it. So earnings, it looks like they've been beating earnings the past 
four results. So the past four quarters that they did. Now we have the, I'm going to look at the debt if it shows. It's not giving me the numbers. Uh, it's pretty lagged on the app or it's frozen or something. It's not giving me anything. So now we're going to look at the balance sheet real quick. I was about to say, the debt is pretty low at 69.66. That is pretty low. So, corporate financial services. Um, that is pretty low debt. That's the lowest debt, actually, I've seen ever on a bank stock. But, they also don't pay a dividend. Last time they paid one was in 2007. So, I just want to see something real quick. I want to see. I want to see the profile real quick. Read about this company, Corporate Financial Services. Again, that's a small. Uh, this is a small sector and a small place for competition going to read about what they do real quick. So then the corporate financial services. So I want to see, I want to read about what they do exactly. So they purchase, collect, and manage portfolios of non-performing loans. So They specialize in purchasing and collecting non-performing loans. It says, since either the credit originator or the third-party collection agencies have been unsuccessful in collecting the full balance owed, the insolvency operation consists primarily of purchasing and collecting on the non-performing loan. So it's almost like they force you. It's like do or die. Um, they got all chips in. It's almost like they force you to pay or if not, they're going to force you to go bankrupt. So they provide fee-based services. So I'm sure this is a company that um, will trick you into lending but then they'll throw a bunch of hidden fees on that i never heard of this company i wouldn't want to be involved in it um as far as buying products but as a business they seem like they have a solid business model they seem like they know what they're doing they seem okay so um i will say yes to this company Because I like the, the earnings. They're not paying the dividend, which I do like. And then the 52-week high and low of the price ranges, they seem pretty decent. I know they've been going down for the last five years and the one year and all that. But again, uh, I would say hopefully and hopefully by next year... Uh, if they keep their debts low, you know, maybe they might do better. I just see potential in this stock. Again, um, it's nice to add it on the watch list, so I'm going to say yes. So I like their numbers, but when it comes to technicals, as of right now, I'm not too crazy about it. So hopefully next year they'll do better. Hopefully soon in the next coming months, the start of 2023, they'll do better. So that's all I have for you guys. I know this video is pretty long, but if you average it out, uh, pretty much only about six minutes a stock. So I did five stocks for you guys. Five, uh, well, four banking stocks, but then one corporate financial services stock. So again, five stocks for you guys, related banking sector. So thank you guys for watching. 
Uh, stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one.